Hello friends, it's The Stitches, and I did not mean to just mysteriously disappear for a while. It's been 2023 for over a month now, and since I've been using my intro sequence and background for two entire years, I think it's time for a refresh. So today, I'm going to invite you into my studio while I make a new background as well as some new channel branding. I've been using these same purple felt letters since the start of 2020. I made them using two layers of incredibly basic crafting felts that I stitched together with embroidery floss. I still want to use these letters since I still like how they look, but I think I want to refresh the color. So I got some green synthetic fabric dye, and this color will start to make more sense once I actually start to assemble things. And I used it to dye my letters a mossy green color. I actually wasn't sure how well the color would change from purple to green, but I was pleasantly surprised. I gently ironed my letters flat after they were washed and dried, using the lowest setting on my iron to prevent any melting. Next, I wanted to challenge myself to primarily use items I already had in my studio for everything, but I also really wanted to use something a bit leafy in my intro sequence and background, so I took a trip to my local Joann's. I wanted something like these long vine garland things of florals, but all of these looked kind of cheaply made, and to be honest, uh, even though they were on sale, they were still a bit too expensive for my project budget. Side note, is it just me, or does anyone else suspect that Joann's has such frequent 15 and 30% off sales on their more expensive items just so that you can't use the 40% off coupons on them? Because you can't stack the coupon with, like, another sale. I don't know, maybe it's just me. In the back of the floral section in my local store, I did find some plain leaf vines that were much more affordable, and I was pleased to find some ivy because I actually specifically wanted ivy. So I got two of those. Now let's create a layout for the intro and outro, and the ad break card and all that stuff. I started with a plain white sheet. I actually haven't used a plain white background for any of my intros, ever. I promise it'll still be pretty and colorful, but I wanted something a bit calmer than my previous setups. Next, I arranged my pink satin around the edge of the frame, and after I was pleased with how it looked on camera, I added the pink chiffon. This is a fairly awkward process, to be honest. It's just the type of thing you have to fiddle with for a while before it starts to look good, and then once it starts to look good you'll mess something up and then it stops looking good and then you'll have to fiddle with it some more. Once I was happy with how the fabrics were arranged, I added the garlands around the edge of the frame as well. I also used some more fake flowers I already had to fill in the blank spots. Now it's time to add the felt letters. I'm actually really pleased with how all the textiles and florals look together. I spread out the letters and filmed myself slowly moving them closer together to spell out my channel name. Stop motion is usually done by taking still photos of each frame, but my camera is an older hand-me-down that I barely understand how to use, and the last time I tried to do traditional stop motion, the lighting of each photo was different for some reason, and it took way more labor to attempt to color correct each frame to match than it does to just film the whole process and isolate the frames in editing. It sounds like it's going to be way more work, but it still only took me about 20 minutes to put together the intro. And personally, I don't mind the extra work of having to scrub through my video and cut out the individual frames because it took me several hours to color correct my photos last time. I'm sure there's probably just a setting on my camera that messed it up, but again, I barely know how to use this camera. Once I'm done filming my sequences, I transferred all my files into my video editing software. As I said before, I just scrubbed through my footage and cut one frame of each image, essentially making a still image. This process is unnecessary if you actually start with still images, but it is what it is. Then I adjusted the time of each clip. I started with half a second for each frame, but the animation just felt too slow, so I shortened them to a quarter second. I like the look of choppy homemade stop motion, but not too choppy. But if the frames are too fast, then it just starts to feel like regular animation instead of, you know, homemade stop motion. Next, it's time to add some music and make any necessary adjustments. 
I'm using the first few seconds of the song Just a Kid by Water Mirrors. It's from Epidemic Sound, which I feel like every YouTuber on Earth uses to license music. My music clip was just a little over 8 seconds, and I had about 4 seconds of animation, so I extended the length of my last image, and then duplicated the rest of the sequence and rearranged the frames of the animation so it would play in reverse. After seeing the animation paired with the music, I decided to remove a couple images and make each frame at the ending of the sequence a little bit shorter in length so that the animation would move just a tiny bit faster. I also experimented with just making all the frames longer to fit the music, but again, it just didn't look right when the clips were that slow. So here's my finished intro. Next, I took a screenshot of this and opened it up in Photoshop. From here, I used the still image to sample colors. Each color is dumped onto a blank image that's the size of a video frame and then exported. I use these blank color cards to add a frame to video footage. All you have to do is layer the video over the color card in the editing software and then scale down the size of the video. That way the color just kind of peeks out in the background. I also use these as a blank card to layer text over for text screens. They're just very useful to have on hand. And I like it when all of my colors are cohesive and I can use the same colors over and over again. So here's all of these color cards. I keep them all in a labeled folder so they're easy to find. And while I have Photoshop open, I'll put together some new channel art because my previous channel art is three years old at this point. With my color cards created and my intro sequence finished, next I'll make my outro sequence. I want to include a short ad for my web shop, so I layered a text transparency over a color card over a still of my textile and floral arrangement that I don't have anything in the center of. Then I made that color card a little bit transparent and added some additional text and adjusted the transparency of all of my clips to create a fade into my thank you card. Add a little music and this outro is ready to be exported now. And you'll be able to see the finished version in full at the end of this video. Now let's move on to the next part of this project. Time to tear down my old background. I really liked this background, but it's starting to feel stale and it's time for a change. I wanted something that was still a little pastel, but more versatile so that it goes with all of the different fashion styles I wear, or at least most of the fashion styles that I wear. For my new background, I'll be using the same rug as before. I just gave it a bit of a wash so that it's looking nice and fresh. I also have a white sheet. This is a different white sheet that's larger than the one I used for my intro and outro. I'll also be using the pink satin and the pink chiffon from before. And of course, I'll use the ivy garlands that I purchased earlier. First, I checked the size of the sheet to make sure that it was big enough. I just clipped it to my frame to do this. At the bottom of the sheet, there's some lace that I would like to remove and use for a garment project at some point in the future, so I just cut it off. Then I surged the raw edge that was left behind. After that, I used my iron to fold over enough fabric to create a channel for hanging. Then I quickly stitched this in place. Now my sheet has been converted into a curtain that can be hung on my frame. It was a bit wrinkled though, so I just used a steamer to work the creases out. Then I clipped my satin onto the frame as well to sort of create a layered effect. I used a bit of twill tape and some safety pins to gather it using the curtain channel at the top of it and then I tied it back using the last little bit of that twill tape. I knew I also wanted to drape my chiffon across the background as well, but I wasn't quite sure what was going to look best, so I just played with it for a little bit. Once I was satisfied with how that was draped, I experimented with pinning the ivy garland, but I just wasn't satisfied with the way it looked pinned up in the middle, so I just let it hang and tucked it behind the satin, and I was a lot happier with how that looked. Also, the two garlands are literally just attached to each other with a safety pin as well. One last little bit of arranging and the addition of a rug later, and the background is finished. So yes, my background is held together with string and safety pins, and yes, I am fine with that. The only thing left for me to do now is put on a cool outfit and take some pictures for my profile picture. Now that my hair is short and I don't intend on growing it out again anytime soon, I want to change my profile picture so that it actually reflects what I currently look like. And that's it! My channel has been thoroughly refreshed for the new year. I hope this was entertaining and or interesting to watch. That's all I have to show you for today. I hope everyone has a good day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!